Greetings, ladies and mendicants, and welcome to this narration of the book Introduction to Human Biology, taken from Reddit. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 3 Sitting at his desk, relatively appropriate to his size, Jean-Francois worked on programming the translator with the help of his laptop. The hardest thing to find on board the station during the last 36 hours had been human-sized furniture and accessories. Aside from that small fading, he had been almost impressed by how quickly things got done around here. They'd each brought a personal computer or tablet with them which allowed the station crew to adapt the technology of the translator to be able to interface with it, allowing for faster programming. Once that was done, use of image and video could be made available, only then needing the user to input words or phrases to describe certain actions or objects. It seemed there was already some kind of library of information, gestures, concepts, and actions that merely needed defining. Like a complex book for children, where pictures corresponded to a word at the bottom. It started off simple enough, showing examples of one object in various settings and increasing numbers in order to establish a number system. Manually, inputting numbers up to a thousand was long and boring, but necessary. Jean-Francois wasn't even sure that a thousand would be enough. He'd have to add more to it later. Where it stopped, though? Billions? Billions? An idea that came to him. He'd focus on words first and then be able to speak for help himself in devising a faster and better way of doing it. Obviously, there would be some words lost in translation or ideas that would be unknown, but the translator would work well enough to communicate. Updates and more words could always be added later. Jean-Francois was almost done putting the finishing touches on his translator when someone sounded the interrupter button at his door. He stretched as he got up, the joints of his body creaking softly as a low gravity. Staying haunched over as he programmed it was starting to get monotone and he welcomed the distraction. With his translator at the ready, Jean-Francois equipped it to his right ear and then went to open the door. Laying his hand on the nearby panel, which detected his DNA and allowed for locking and unlocking. Jean-Francois looked out the door, seeing no one or nothing, and was about to shut it closed, when something moved the periphery of his vision. All the way down, a small round ball of fur was doing circles. He knelt down in order to get closer to the same level it is. Um, hello there, uh, what brings you here? The creature spoke rapidly in some high-pitched squeaks. Jean-Francois waited for the translator to start, but it seemed to not be starting. A few moments before giving up on it, however, the creature stopped talking and the translator began. Go to translator works when you have time, room 23C, deck 2. Goodbye. The small creature proceeded to roll away, leaving Jean-Francois alone. Ah, uh, it only begins translating after the user stops speaking. Good to know. I need to add more words, but it's nice to know that it's working. Seems like it goes both ways. The more vocabulary I add to it, the greater translation I receive, and the more sophisticated mine seems to become. Deciding that it would be best to fill up the translator a bit more before meeting other species, Jean-Francois resigned himself to work on it a bit more. He concentrated on expanding the vocabulary. That way, even if the sentences weren't lined up perfectly, he could still make things out. A grueling 30 minutes later of trying to think of words to add that weren't redundant, Jean-Francois decided to go and check how Barry was doing on his end. Their rooms weren't very far, simply across the corridor and around the corner. Jean-Francois sounded the bell-like mechanism, alerting Barry to his presence. It did not take long as Barry opened the door and greeted Jean-Francois with his traditional greeting. Hey man, what's up? Jean-Francois slightly cringed on the inside, he had hoped that Barry would be more professional. Although on second thought, did aliens really understand human culture and would know what is proper and isn't? Not much. Uh, I've just come to see how you're doing. Any progress on your translator? Jean-Francois stepped into Barry's room as his colleague retreated inside of it after saying hi. Pitching his own translator, Barry put it on as well. Hey, I've got an idea. You probably program yours in French, right? I did mine in English. Maybe we can test it out with each other. They took our turn saying small, simple sentences, making sure that the translator did its job well and filling in the blanks when it came up empty on a certain word. 
Seeing time fly by, Jean-Francois remembered he had to go to a meeting. Hey, Barry, uh, I was told to go somewhere for a meeting. Wanna come? Barry thought about it for a second and nodded. Yeah, sure, Baron. If Jean-Francois had to use a word to describe Barry, and only a single word, it would probably be chill. He had no idea how he'd actually made it through the selection, as he was one of the most laid-back, go-with-the-flow person he'd ever met. Jean-Francois and Barry walked down the corridors, looking for a deck 2 and a room 23C. It proved a difficult task, however, as none of the markings used the human alphabet at all. Scratching his head, Jean-Francois looked around for any possible help. He spotted an alien crew member doing some maintenance work on a small panel. He walked up to him, hoping that he didn't bother him too much. Hello, um, I was wondering if you could help me find a room. The translator did its job, connecting to the other nearby translators in range and expressing the sentence, those words, into something the other could understand. The maintenance worker, a slightly smaller creature, close to a meter tall with three legs, replied to his request. Which room you used? Deck 2, room 23C. Take moving stair three corners from existence, then move south 30 spans to height starboard. Okay, thank you. I think I can decipher that. So, take some kind of elevator. Then move, uh, 180 feet towards the side the station is steered on. Oh boy. It took a little bit of time, but the duo soon found the room that they were meant to go to. Thankfully, the door was already opened as they got there. John Francois hesitated on entering unannounced, but Barry stepped right in, entering and calling out, Hello, is anybody there? The room was dimly lit, the shapes being hard to discern. A voice called out to them and stood up from where it was seated. Hello, pleased that you can make translators work basic. Good, have sit. The light slowly became brighter, revealing more and the room. It looked to be some kind of office. Work office, to be more precise. Upon closer inspection, it was the same tall, lanky alien that they had seen the day before. At least, that's what it seemed like to Jean-Francois. It could very well have been another. He'd only seen one and wasn't sure that he could discern them if he saw another. A few different size and types of chairs were present in the room, likely to accommodate different species. Barry noticed something similar to a bean bag and hurriedly jumped onto it. Dibs! Jean-Francois spotted something resembling a stool, but with a back and settled on that. When the alien returned to its position behind its apparent desk, a ring rose up and covered half of its body, filling it with water afterwards. Past first test, translator work, presently in orientation, must evaluate human, make sure safe, no harm. Soon, join students in learning, time needed, perform test on human sample, make sure safe from other species. Jean-Francois noticed the translator seemed to slowly improve the more it worked. It likely held some form of AI or adaptive programming that allowed it to learn on the go. Other human also passed test. For you human minutes before you, first time sample species all finish work so quick. Human good potential, already spent time at Academy, back on world. Thank you for the compliment. Uh, your crew certainly helped with getting us set up for the work and our computers. That helped immensely. Um... Now you're asking if we have schools back home. There's a few levels of schooling, yes, sir. We were about to enter college or university before coming here. The alien's colors changed from green to blue to a more subtle teal and yellow combination. Its demeanor seemed happy. Ooh, new word, college, university. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. It designates specific learning. Advanced learning, yes, good description. Most other species only teach the, 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 the special few. Uh, resources not wasted. Human different, different good, different better. For my species, speech is pleasure. Vibrations help us. Most of us work with translating and being diplomats. Barry and Jean-Francois sat, mesmerized by the dialogue. It finally felt like a real worse contact. Like they were having a real conversation with aliens and learning more about them. Enough for now, may go to rooms. One human period of sleep from now. If all test results good, join Academy students in learning. Don't worry, translator takes time. This progress good, quick. Some species take many cycles to this point. Some species even fewer words. Some species also more words. Trainee, plant species have 50 different words for plant. It is unnecessary, depend on plant. Love with plant. Sorry, got carried away. Please, uh, 
Deserve rest and joy. The lights dimmed once more, indicating to Barry and Jean-Francois that the alien wanted time to itself. Jean-Francois breathed a sigh of relief. He'd been so stressed out about everything was working out all right. He departed ways and headed back to the rooms on their own. If what the alien was telling them was right, the next morning life was about to get very interesting again. Meanwhile, on the other side of the station, a certain Lissona lay in a bed of coins, a tradition dating back millennia, reading her copy of the human internet on her handheld device. She'd heard from her father that there had finally arrived about 36 hours ago. Her tail danced happily side to side as she heard the news. She hoped that they would pass the basic tests the academy administers without much hassle. Judging from what she could read of them, they should have a good grasp of the basics. One thing in particular, however, piqued her interest. She had managed to find some material on dragons, as they called her race on the internet there, but most of the information was inaccurate. There was, however, some information that was scarily very accurate. How would the humans know about dragons? This was essentially first contact for their species. Or was it? End of chapter. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.